Rolando in Mexico who wants to talk about morality and abortion. You're on with Tracy and Jen. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, I think uh, it was like a month ago. It was it was both of you. And could you recap real quick? Why would it be morally correct to have an abortion if, well, granted that the pregnancy came through a consensual sexual relation? What would it be morally correct? Well, I'm not sure that it would be a morally ju- a moral judgment at all. Yeah, it's it's not about morality at that point. I mean, consent to sex is not consent to pregnancy, and consent to becoming pregnant is not consent to remaining pregnant. Okay, can you say that again? Consent to sex is not consent to pregnancy, and consent to okay. becoming pregnant is not consent to remaining pregnant. Well, there's always a, a possibility if you have sex that you can get pregnant. There's always a possibility. Even yes, if you, if you, if you drive a car, there's always a possibility that you could get into a serious accident and be injured. But when you get into yes. your car, you're not consenting to get into a serious accident and being injured. And certainly if you do get injured, you're not consenting to being left on the side of the road with no alternative. Well, uh, I, don't, I don't think that's a, a fair comparison. Why? Say, let's, let's, use, let's use cars. Well, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can we agree that understanding that a risk could occur is not the same as consent? Yeah. Can we at least agree on that point? Well, yeah. Okay, because I mean, there's a lot of things I understand are risks in life, right? Like if I stay home at night, I'm at a risk of being raped by a home invader. That doesn't mean that I consented to that, right? So consent, <laughs> understanding a risk is not the same as consenting to something. Yes, but okay. you have to be responsible if you get into an accident. All right, but I'm just saying, can we agree that understanding a risk event could occur is not the same as giving consent? Or can we just agree on that one point? I, 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 I agree. Okay. But now, if, if you get into an accident, let's say it's your fault, why would you, wouldn't you be responsible to, to pay? Um, responsible to pay for what? To pay for the damages that you uh, caused. Okay. The other person that's that's a completely for, separate thing. The, the question is, if you're in an accident, even if it's your fault and you're injured, yeah. should you not be allowed to access any kind of medical care for that? Yeah, you should. Yeah, you should be allowed. Okay. Should there be restrictions on what kind of medical care you can get? You shouldn't be responsible for the damages you you caused the other vehicle? Well, that's a a separate thing. We're not talking about damages to other people. Yeah, let's say that she drove her car into a brick wall and nothing was damaged. In in a pregnancy, there's there's two people. There's there's you and then there's the baby. There's the the other car in in this case. So you have to be responsible. If you get into an accident that's your fault, then you made the choice to drive. And you got into an accident, well, then you should be responsible. Okay, so am I responsible? Wait a minute. Am I responsible for being raped if I stay home and somebody is a home, and a home invader rapes me? Am I, do I have to take responsibility for that? But we're not talking about that. When yes, we're talking about, we're talking about I'm taking a risk when I stay home that I'm going to be raped by a home invader. And you're saying that because you know, I understand you're, you're it. The subject. Let's, let's, let's stay in the subject of. I the, am. I'm uh, trying to, I'm trying to take this point by point. You're saying that if I, if I understand a risk when I do a thing, that I'm responsible if that risk occurs. And I'm saying that I understand there's a risk that my home could be invaded and I could be raped. Does that mean that when I stay home, I am responsible if I'm invaded, somebody invades my home and rapes me? You're responsible. Well, we're responsible for what? Am I responsible if I understand there's a risk someone could break into my house tonight and rape me? If someone does break into my house and rape me, does that mean I am responsible for it because I knew that there was a risk of it when I stayed home? Yeah. 
I, I don't understand what you're Okay, what I'm trying to ask is whether or not knowing that a risk could occur, that that then yep. makes me responsible if the re- risk event does occur. In this case, no, because the, the, the person making the choice the other person, the other person is making the choice. I made a choice, and right? I, I didn't have to stay. I didn't have to stay home. I could have slept somewhere else. I made a choice, yes. and I understood the risk when I made that choice. Of course. Okay, so am I responsible yes, for being raped? No, you're not. Why not? I made the choice to stay home, and I knew that this was a risk. Women get raped by burglars that come into their homes. And I know this. So that is, is a very rare occurrence. And so, okay, so now we're getting somewhere. So what you're saying is that if I knew that there was like a higher risk, what percentage of risk would make it my responsibility? The, the, let's say of uh, having sex and getting pregnant, that, that, that's the risk. That's a, that, that high of a risk. But there's not a very high risk of a woman getting pregnant with a single act of sex. Of intercourse. Right. In fact, in one it's study, a, in one very, very, uh, okay. in one study, it took 104 sex acts to have a successful conception in couples who were okay. trying to have a baby. Right? Couples taking no precautions, who were doing things to try and uh, facilitate having a baby. 104 sex acts was what was required to have to result in a single pregnancy, on average. So basically, basically, what you're saying is that. You make the choice to have sex, and if you happen to get pregnant, mm-hmm. you, you're you not responsible for that pregnancy. Right. I'm saying right. that when a natural event occurs, women don't control their their physiology to that level, right? We don't we don't make the decision to become or not become pregnant. Plenty of women who want to become pregnant can't. Plenty of women who don't want to become pregnant do. Um, women just don't have that level of control over their physiology. It's not something that we you know, consciously control. Right. Contrary to what some politicians think, we can't just like yeah. shut this. down. I was down. born into a body that does what it does. There are certain things I can do to maybe mitigate. Like, for example, let's say I didn't lock my door. Now am I responsible because I got raped? The, the difference I think here is that by making the choice, you're creating somebody new. And you have to be responsible for that other person. Okay, so then what about parents who have children? Are they responsible for their kids on this level? They're, they're, that? Every parent, right? Every biological parent has produced that has produced a child. Are they responsible yes. on that level to donate blood tissue um, in order to facilitate that child's life if they are unable of self-sustaining? You're saying that if I have sex and I create another person, I'm now responsible for them up to putting my own life at risk, donating blood, tissue, like everything, letting them use my entire body however it's needed in yes. order to facilitate that that child, it stays viable. So if I, if the baby is born and it has, for example, a, a, a situation where it, it lacks a liver function, it needs a liver transplant, the mother and the father are there, the father is a, is a viable candidate for transplantation, and he says he doesn't want to donate a liver, are you saying that we should change the laws and force him to do so? Well, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that that the, every parent has to be responsible at a uh, normal level. Okay, so a normal pregnant level. woman, first of all, is nobody, not a parent. Nobody, wait, nobody, wait a minute. Nobody, nobody, pregnant nobody woman? In the, Stop. Wait, 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 no. Right. Okay, so first of all, a pregnant person is not a parent. But secondly, parents who have these kids and their biological offspring... If we're going to say that if you produce another person, you are then, quote, responsible for them, and you're going to use the pregnant woman as the level of responsibility, then you'd have to say that parents, after the child is born, should have to donate body, tissue, put their lives at risk, whatever it takes to keep this child alive. I think I got muted. Yeah, but you're back on now. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I don't think we see eye to eye on this. I think parents are responsible. I, but I they're not. But the, the problem is they're not. Legally, they are not as responsible as what you're suggesting. 
they have produced a child and they are not held to the same account as a pregnant woman is if she's not allowed to abort. And and so the, there's a couple of things. That, that parents aren't responsible if they don't. Do no, they're no, not no, responsible. No, no. They're, they're not responsible to the same level that you're saying a pregnant woman would have to be responsible. That we don't hold them to that level of responsibility. No parent. And they have I mean, produced a child. You're, you're going to a little bit to the extreme. I'm saying a, a normal no. pregnancy. But no, no, no. This is no. not. This is not extreme. Let, let me explain something. Parental rights don't exist. Parental rights and obligations don't exist until the child is born. That's not an extreme position. That's actually the law. There are no parental rights or obligations until there right. is an actual child that's living independently. Right of a woman's body. And the point that I'm making is that even when people accept those parental obligations, right. they are not held to re supply the level of support for the child that you're suggesting a pregnant woman should be required to, right. to maintain. And this is a level well, of I'm support and obligation that you seem to think is extreme but not if it's a pregnant woman. Yeah, suddenly it's okay. Yeah, who does not have parental obligations yet. I mean, literally her blood pressure could go up very quickly and she could right. die. And you're saying that's okay. That's something that she should just have to do because, you know, her body basically, you know, took it took an egg into the lining and she right. found out she was pregnant, surprise. And just because she had sex, now suddenly, you know, it's, it's okay to force her to just stay well, in birth. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when the woman makes the choice to have the abortion because she feels like it because she whatever reason you know, right because she right. doesn't want to she doesn't want to risk maybe having a, a deadly or debilitating episode let's say yeah. maybe she understands the risks of pregnancies and she says yeah no way no way am i taking that risk a parent doesn't have to run into a burning building to save their children in fact if they don't most people would be sympathetic and say hey there's nothing you could do that was an inferno we don't expect parents to do it. If they did do it, you know, that's great, and we would understand, even if they died in the attempt. But most of the time, we don't tell a parent, you have to put yourself in a situation that puts your own life at risk to save your child. Most of the time, we let the parent make that decision, and we're sympathetic either way. I'm saying that if you make a choice and it, and it affects somebody else, and that other person has to pay or whatever it is. Let's okay. say you leave um, with, a, with a parking ticket or something okay. like that. And right, you, I, you, I'm with right. you. Okay, but I, I, don't, I don't think you get it. I, I hear what you're saying, Rolando. I hear what you're saying. This is what I'm trying to get at. So let's say that I have a baby and it's born with a okay. genetic birth defect that, that runs in my yeah. family. I knew this was okay. a risk, that this child would be born with yeah. a liver defect, and sure enough, it was. And now they say, okay. I can make a liver donation and potentially save the child's life or not. It's up to me. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, yeah. I created the situation according to what you're saying. I, I got pregnant. I had this baby. I, I passed on a genetic defect, and I am still not obligated to save its life. But I'm not talking about those those cases. I'm talking about regular cases where birth defects are a regular thing. thing. Yeah, have, birth defects. Genetic happen. defects are a normal are are a normal thing. Feel birth like birth defects. You feel like it, right? Because I feel like not giving a liver to the child that's born with the genetic defect because I feel you like want to it. Take again extreme cases. I want it's to not, an not an extreme, extreme case. This is an extreme. Yes, it is. No, it's yes, not. It is. Children are born yes, with birth defects. I want to talk about I'm, normal, everyday cases. Normal, everyday yes, cases. these are yes. everyday um, cases. I'm saying time. that you're saying, you're. I'm looking at your points here, and you're saying you created this situation where this other person now needs something from you, and you're going to say, I made you, right? I made you with a birth defect. 
Because if a pregnancy is my fault, I assume the birth defect is my fault, too, because I'm apparently responsible for biology. Let's not talk about birth defects. Let's, let's talk about... Global I'm talking about a... Situ- no, I'm talking about a principle, a point here that you are making, which is if you create the situation that negatively impacts somebody else by being biologically a woman or having a uterus, that you then are responsible for making sure that they exist and that they don't die and that they don't suffer, and that's your obligation. And I'm saying it's not. And I'm giving you an example where everybody understands it's not. Okay, now give me an example when it's a normal case where there's a birth defect and the woman just wants to have an abortion because she wants to have an abortion. And I'm saying if you don't want to donate blood and tissue and put your life and health at risk to give somebody else a shot at life, you're not required to do so, ever. I think I'm, am I muted? No, you're no, not you're muted not at muted. all. Okay, now give me an example of a normal pregnancy, normal fetus, and it would be normally correct to, to, to have the abortion. Just because because the, the, uh, when the you're, you're saying, you seem to be assuming that women know that a pregnancy is going to be uneventful. That a woman knows when she finds out she's pregnant that there won't be a blood pressure spike that puts her into the emergency room and maybe kills her. You are assuming that women understand, hey, this pregnancy is going to be a, a walk in the park, which, frankly, even a, quote, normal pregnancy is not a walk in the park. Her body will never be the same. Never. It changes your physiology in ways that you will never be the same. So this is not like some— I, it, this, I agree. Yeah, and so this is not a minor thing that you're asking her to do. It could leave her, I mean, I have a friend that keeps a little, you know, story on his wall of a woman that went in to have a baby, normal pregnancy, normal baby, everything was supposed to be normal. She came out (laughs) a quadruple amputee. You cannot predict what's going to happen with a pregnancy and a birth. And you can't sit there and tell a woman, why don't you just assume it's going to be safe and fine? It's up to her if she wants to take that risk, not you. Nobody who has a child is required to take that risk. I think you you're wrong. You, I, I just think you're wrong. It, wrong it, where? Wrong. What did yeah, I what did I say that was wrong? That you're not obligated. You made the, you're not you're obligated. <laughs> no, you're no, not. The law I mean, obligates no one to do that. You're trying to obligate a pregnant woman to do something we don't obligate anyone to do. I don't know why I'm looking at my microphone. Let's say, okay, if you want to talk about the law, but I want to talk about morality. Is it morally correct to do that? I well, let, let me ask you I, is, I'm, I'm saying it's not morally correct or incorrect. It's like a parent, is it morally correct to not run into an inferno to save your children? It, that's, it's not a moral judgment. You, if, if you can't bring yourself to run into a burning building, right, that to me is not a moral defect. That's just a decision you have to make because, dude, I'm not running in there after your kids either. It's, I don't know. Call the fire department. Seven million people would run into a, a burning building. Some people would. would come out alive. Yeah, some but people would. There are seven million people here. All right, so, but I'm saying some people would run into that building, and you know, good for them. They're they're it's wonderful the people. Risk. It's not the same risk of running into a burning building, a burning building or, or having a pregnancy. It's not the same risk. It's a risk. It is a risk. It's a risk. And you know what? Whether you die you in a don't, burning... No, you don't know what's going to happen if you run into that building. You could save right. those children and come out fine. You do not know what will happen. You only know that there is a future ahead of you that is nine months of unforeseen risk. And at the end of it is a birth that adds like exponential amounts of risk to all kinds of things that could happen to you. And whether you die in a burning building or you die during a pregnancy, you're still dead. So ultimately... It, you still get to be the one to decide if you're going to take that risk. You know, at this point, exactly. Rolando, I, I feel comfortable, I think, with the level of conversation. I feel like we gave you an opportunity to make some points. We made our points. I don't think anything is going to resolve. I, I have a question for Rolando before okay. we cut him loose. Here. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so obviously you feel very strongly about this, that um, if a woman has... A pregnancy and decides that she doesn't want to continue it, even if it was an unintended okay. pregnancy, you think she should not be allowed to have an abortion? Is that? If, 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 it, wasn't, 
If it was unintended? Yes. Okay, now that's a different case. I, I, I was talking about uh, when it was a consensual. No, no. Uh, yeah, she, she, yeah, she had sex, but she didn't intend to get pregnant. Get pregnant. Well, it was the same the same uh, example from the car. You got into your car. You wanted to okay, get into okay. your car. The you, thing is, you didn't want to get into a wreck. You didn't want to get into a wreck. You okay, wanna, I, I understand that. Uh, I understand that. That's not my question. Listen to my question. Okay. Obviously, you feel very strongly about this. So, what are you doing to prevent unintended pregnancies? Uh, section. Okay, so you're using a condom uh, every single time you have sex. Uh, you know, other uh, type of... Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not asking what she's using. Right. I'm asking what you're doing. Yeah, she's asking about your level of personal responsibility. Are you using a condom every single time you have sex? Oh, I mean, uh, I've had a vasectomy. Okay, so you've had a vasectomy. Okay, good. So you're not contributing to the problem. Because you understand that women can only get pregnant if a man ejaculates, right? They can't get themselves pregnant. Yes, I understand that. Okay. So why don't you go talk to the men around you who are ca causing unintended pregnancies and explain to them what their responsibility is instead of lecturing women about what our responsibility is because women bear most of the physical costs of an unintended pregnancy. In fact, we bear all the physical costs of the unintended pregnancy. Yeah, I, I can definitely do that. Yes, uh, thank you. Okay. Look, That'd be much more productive anyway, in this conversation. Men don't have any legal rights when uh, a woman is pregnant. You have no legal rights. You, you're right. You have no legal right, right to tell a woman she has to continue a pregnancy if she doesn't want to. All right. Well, anyway, that's fair. Thank you for your call. Uh, you're right. It's okay. Look, well, this call could go on forever, but I want to thank you for the call, Rolando. It's okay. always interesting thank topic. You. All right. Well, thanks so much. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we are moving on.